would you believe it, that the Cabinet meeting today, they've nothing better to be doing than reviewing our Irish passport. Apparently it was last redesigned in 2013 and they had a competition and it cost 550000 for someone to update it. And apparently they're subject to forgeries and fakes and for security reasons we've got to maybe update it every uh, decade. And so Meal Martin is going to announce today that the uh, uh, review and people are going to be invited to put in a design a public consultation will take place through a short online questionnaire which is to be available from this Wednesday where you as citizens will be asked to consider which Irish flora, uh, f- flora and fauna they think should be included in the design. And then, of course, that got us thinking here on the PK Show about uh, landmarks in Ireland, uh, personalities in Ireland. Uh, why hold back on the redesign of this? It's a great pleasure to talk to Owen Corry, editor of Air and Travel magazine, without doubt the most travelled living Irishman on the planet. Owen, how are you? Uh, good morning. I hear you want your own uh, face on the front of the passport, Ivan. Well... Well, it, it my ego would cover that, but I don't know if you can afford the copyright. So tell us, what, what, what what's this all about? We update our passport every few years. Um, it is pretty standard internationally that countries um, will redesign. Uh, the idea is that there's a lot of... Um, Things that can, uh, that you know, the guys who f- fraudulently issue passports are pretty good at it. So you have to stay ahead of those guys. Um, there's a lot of uh, developments, technological developments. The biometrics are um, that we refer- we have been a part of our passport since 2006. They are uh, moving on in leaps and bounds, and um, I th- a change is as good as the rest. Everybody likes uh, to have the trendiest, latest, newest, and the newest Irish passport will be become a status symbol. It's a very valuable document, Ivan. We have one of the most valuable, most powerful passports in the world. But, I mean, first of all, I would have thought in this day and age we'd have an EU passport, which would be streamlined and consistent. And then there's this other thing, that I have a public services card, I have a driver's licence, and I don't need a book at all. It's just a simple little, like my bank card. In theory, travelling within the European Union doesn't shouldn't require passports. That's been a goal and ideal of the European Commission uh, for many years. As you know, the Commission and the Member States, you're very versed in European affairs yourself. The Commission and the European, the Member States and the Parliament all move in different directions be times. Uh, the Member States want to keep their name on front of the passport, but it is a common colour. That was one of the issues that arose in the Brexit debate. They wanted to change the colour. We changed our colours from the old standard green passport, from which goes back to the Free State. The introduction of the Free State passport was a saga in itself in the early 20s. But um, we now we have a standard colour for the European Union and we have pretty much standard visa policies. Um, there's The countries we get into visa-free are largely determined at European level now, um, but the uh, member states still want their name and their symbol in front of the passport. That's where the harp is. The competition and the talk of today is what other um, representative in symbols of Ireland, uh, mainly flora and fauna, not so much the personality. A few nettles, a few briars. I mean, like, what, 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 I mean, are we going to go for daffodils or like, I mean, uh, you know, what, what, what's your own thoughts on that? Yeah, the harp is the, is the national symbol. It's on the front. Uh, the shamrock associated with us since the 1600s. Uh, less, you know, it tends to show up less on uh, phys- on uh, f- official documents. We have only one indigenous Irish tree, Ivan, the Irish white beam. I saw one of them in County Clare in the Burren last week. There's only a couple of hundred left. Those sort of things is what they're looking at. What are the animals most associated with us? Some of the listeners will be old enough to remember that wonderful set of coins pre-decimalisation that we had the animals uh, on the, uh, associated with Ireland back to uh, Jack B. Yates's proposals back in the 1920s. They're the sort of things they're looking for. Less so the personalities, less so the, the popular culture associations that Ireland has that would be more ephemeral. Yeah, because we, we put this out to our, our listeners and 
Uh, here's a couple of texts. Uh, can we have Brian O'Driscoll lifting the Six Nations trophy? That would be a passport page I wouldn't want stamped. And another says, read the new passport to celebrate our design heritage. What about using individually hand-carved bog oak? Right. Uh, can't see it taking any longer tradition than the current version. Bog oak. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, the, the bog oak is is hugely associated. It's one of the things that Irish diplomats give as gifts to foreign dignitaries, and of course the uh, the the animals we're associated we're we're a huge animal. As a former minister for agriculture, you'll well remember, well versed in how and, associated and, with food and agriculture Ireland has been down the years. And and, and I thought everything these days was just barcoded. Uh, you know what I mean, whereby you have an electronic trace. When I rock up at any airport in the world, is is it just a manual check? Or is it, you know, in this day of AI and data and all of that, what is the actual International Civil Aviation Authority regs in terms of a passport? Yeah, and let's get to the serious business here. You're absolutely right. The ICAO, they're the ones that determine it. it Passports were, we, nobody had passports really until the First World War. Uh, then after uh, the Europe went to war, everybody started looking at each other's citizens. Uh, a great achievement, 1920, standard design for passports around the world. They all look, uh, feel the same. And that, that, that's the standard design we're still working, using 122 and a half years later. Huge leaps and bounds, biometrics since 2006, automatic gates, almost every airport I'd fly through, you put your passport, it compares it with your face and the gates open uh, unless it, if they don't open you're brought aside there are is it sort of facial tech. recognition t- tech Facial, rec- facial recognition and the other important thing is the, bio- the little chip that's on your passport. We're almost at a stage where when you're in the queue, they'll already start processing your information. Uh, there are the, le- the technologies there for that. The legislation is catching up with it. Countries like Australia, Ivan, uh, used to be a big queue to get in. You just slip your, your, your uh, passport onto the machine readable and the gates open and you're in. Uh, hu- big advantage, I mentioned how powerful the Irish passport is. We have uh, access to 100, there are about 227 travel destinations. We've access to 189 of them, about 150 of them with no visa, about uh, 12 or 13 with uh, e-visa or visa, uh, 37 with visa on arrival. And there's only 27 countries worldwide that we still require uh, that visa where you go to the embassy in advance and all of that stuff. So it the leaps and bounds. Every six months, something happens with passports that makes trans, transport easy and transition easy and getting in and out of countries e- easier. Uh, big change coming for people coming into Ireland. Uh, in the next year, we will have the equivalent of what the USA have. The ESTA listeners will be very familiar with the travelling to the United States. People tra- travelling into Ireland will have to apply in advance from uh, non-European Euro- Union countries to get the equivalent of that. That's part of the pushback against immigration and uh, people travelling that we've seen in the last 10 or 15 years. But uh, in general, travel has got much more much easier. The passport, uh, we've had forgery, big forgery scandals in the past, the Irish passport being used by uh, sometimes state uh, state operatives. And we always, up to, we, the idea of updating your passport every 10 years ago is part of the security process against that. But let's Let's just celebrate the fact that passports have moved on in leaps and bounds. Your your, your book passport uh, will get you into 189 countries, and the uh, passport card, which is also very important, gets you into all of Europe and a couple of other countries as well. A uh, couple of exceptions worth watching: um, keep keep an eye on Turkey and Morocco. They're both big travel destinations, holiday destinations out of Ireland. The passport card won't work, but one of the big developments in the last two years has been the visa for Turkey has been abolished. So all the major places Irish people go in large numbers, you no longer require a visa and that passport. It's a magic passport. Uh, it gets you through gates and if you present it to an official in countries around the world as I have, then they see Ireland on it, there's always a smile. Before I let you go, you're always up to speed on everything to do with air and travel. Where's the most popular numerically, quantitatively, uh, destination for Irish uh, sun lovers or travellers this year? 
absolutely Spain has been the case. 70% of our sun lovers go to either Spain or Portugal. So Spain is our biggest destination and is growing. The number of flights uh, we have has is increasing to those traditional destinations. There are a couple of new places that are popping up as well. But, you know, let's put it in context here. One village in Spain that Irish people go to in numbers, let's pick out Santa Pons and Mallorca because the leaving certs are probably on their way on the flight as we speak. That does as many uh, Irish tourists a year as Greece does. So while we Is have that a Magaluf you're choices, talking about? <laughs> <laughs> just across the mountain, you know, Magaluf is, is full of boisterous English people. Santa Ponza is where the boisterous Irish people go. Huh? We do have our little resorts. I'd There's be happy even... to go to Killarney and the Galway races and Camolan and Wexford and all those places. A great pleasure yeah. to talk to you, as oh, always. A great pleasure. A Ivan, fount of you. knowledge. I'm uh, telling you all about visas and with ideas on the passports. Uh, I think we should use Owen Corrie there, editor of Aaron travel magazine uh, we should use a round tower a truly Irish o- iconic structure says Alan uh, and what does he say here Cahill and Tip in the words of Seamus Heaney take note my passport's green could the redesigned proposal not incorporate a return to the green cover don't expect them to do anything sensible